Good morning, everybody. So today we are starting to speak about visual design. Hmm? Um, so moving away from guidelines and principles that are more general on the design process overall, uh, we can speak about visual attributes of those design and of graphical user interface. While guidelines and principles can be applied to many, also not graphical, um, user interface, clearly for graphical user interface as the one that most of you or all of you are doing, there are some components about the visual aspects and things to do or not to do in general, things to consider how to structure and visualize information, whatever they are, this information, on uh, an application. Hmm? So, but first, as always, all of fame or all of fa or shame. So I think you know what is this. And in particular is, and it's still, it's related with the visual design actually. And, and also with principle in a way. Um, so this is the, an Apple watch and this is the menu for navigating, the default menu for navigating the application in the Apple watch for a random picture for, again, selecting and opening the application, navigating to the application installed on the watch. So, what do we say? Pros, cons. Also considering what we know so far. Can you repeat, sorry. I It is fame, okay? Mm -hmm, it's adequate for the small screen. And it has the same icon on the phone. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is for sure pros. And you say these are the only pros, no cons of this design layout. If you, if you don't know what the icon represents, you, you, you have to discover and it's, you have to think about it, so that is a, a cons. Anything else? Are small, yeah. Yeah, so the, the size of the icon could be a problem. That could be another cons. So they are small because there are small space on the screen, so. Mm -hmm. There are many things that the probability of opening a wrong application is higher, et cetera. Too many things on, on the screen in, in one single moment. Then you can, if you are not fam familiar with that, you can um, zoom in and out and also move the space around, but always in this um, circular, let's say, layout. It's not a list of applications. Yes, so we are just adding cons in this moment, most of cons to the, to the pros that actually were are right, no? the, the pros, but also the cons are, are, are right. So anything else? What about the layout? There is not an order, yes. And if I tell you, open the 
um, reminder application, which is the reminder application. You don't know where to go. You have to remember the icon that is helping. The fact that the icon is the same on the phone is helping, clearly, because you can recognize that. That's for sure a pro, as he was saying before. But here, even with the recognize, you don't know where to go. So you focus on the center. Everybody focus on the center. So we are focusing on the clock. When you open the, the, the menu, you focus on the clock, because it's at the center of the screen. That's where your focus is. And if you want to look for the reminder application, where do you have to look? Up, down, left, right, zoom in, zoom out. It's actually there. So where is it? It's actually there, the reminder application. Yeah, yeah, there is. <laughs> it's small, but there is. It's very, very small, but there is. It's incredibly small. Maybe you don't see it, but there is. It's here. It's this one. But, but the same you could do, um, so, um, so let's say, so I know what all these icons are, but uh, let's say that you want to open a timer, which is the timer? Near the clock. Yes, they are also small. So actually here is the timer, but here you don't see probably. There is another icon that is similar to a clock. That is another application, it's not for the timer. And, and also, yes, we have applications that are the same on the iPhone, but also this one, this one is not the same on the iPhone. I don't remember what is this one. It's translate maybe, or it could be time zones because it's a word. So it could be many things. And uh, others are easier. So this one with the heart rate, what could be? It's not. It's not the heart application. The health application is heartbeat, right? It should be. And this is instead? So since the other one is heartbeat, this is? No. This is the ECG. This is the ECG application. That is still heart related, but it's not heart beat. It's just a separate thing. So you know, you can have some kind of recognition that is good, but it's the layout and the small icons that actually makes this kind of menu made in this way complicated and more on the hollow shame for me than not on the hollow fame. Indeed, in the latest version of the, so this menu was present since the first version of the operating system, but in the latest version of the operating system, they added this as an alternative menu. It is the classical linear menu for navigating with the name of the application, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is now an option you can enable. It's not the default option, but still they recognize that there was a problem here, and they also provide now the classical expected menu that has problems. If you want to pick the podcast application, it's not here, you have to scroll more, but as all the other advantages about the size of the icon, the, the, the name of the icon, if you don't know what is this application, and they are alphabetically ordered, so if you want something with a P, you go down until you find P. Hmm? So it has um, advantages, and they move to this. Now it's an option. It's not the default one, but you have both. You can choose where this, the classical one is the default one, and the other no. Hmm? So just to make an example of this, and actually this is, there is a law that we didn't see, and we are not going to see a match. Uh, there's a law in HCI that's called the Fitz law. Uh, that basically, it's a mathematical law. There is a formula that basically say, cal allow you to say 
which is the distance and the speed and the frequency and the performance, let's say, of selecting a target on the screen given your original position. Hmm? So if I'm here and want to select podcast, these, the distance between where I am and where it should go is very, very high. Hmm? If I'm here and I have to select the podcast, the distance is clearly slow, uh, small. Hmm? So this law calculates this. And this is an example of a negative Fitz law, because the Fitz law, if you apply the Fitz law, you discover that linear menu are very, very inefficient, clearly, because you have to move through the list, and the longer the, the linear menu, the less efficient you are. And circular menus are actually more efficient, but circular menus, not these kind of menus. Because yes, there is a less distance for finding the application, but then you have the problem, which is the order of this application, how this put. And if you have to remove it, if you have to remove one application, you click on it, they move a little bit, and then an incredibly small X appear here on the border. So the icon already is small, and the X is even smaller. And you have to tap on it with the finger. So it has some serious plot, not serious, but it has some problems. It has some pros, but it also has some problems related to the layout mostly that bring with him, with it, small icons, small option for the icons, etc. cetera. Hmm? And indeed, again, they added the linear menu that at least is clear for unknown application or for not familiar application. So this is probably a bit, the menu is a little bit more on the shame. It's not terrible, clearly, it's not, but it's a little bit more on the shame than not on the fame from a pure interaction perspective for all these reasons. Okay? So, visual design. Um, so which are, which is, which is, what do we mean for visual design in general? For visual design we mean three, let's say, main things. We means that a visual design of a user interface should guide, should pace, and should message, communicate something to the user. Guiding means that should convey structure, should convey the importance, relative importance, one element against the other, the relationship within elements or between elements. But also, we should, we, through visual design, we should be able to orient people using, to use efficacy, efficacy uh, with efficiency, the user interface and showing where to go to complete their own task. And also providing suggestion if you want to dive deeper, if you want to move towards more expert um, usage of the application, and also expressing meaningful meaning, style on the overall application, mm? to respect who, who is the target population. Mm? And just to make an example, if you are on this last part, conveying meaning and style, if you are creating, again, an application for a child, you will use a totally different style than an application for an elderly person because you need to convey maybe the same kind of information, but just in a different language, in a different also visual perspective. At various level, both conscious as unconscious. And also, but this is not really the goal, also making things aesthetically nice. But this is not the primary goal of visual design. It's more about structuring things, explaining or highlighting relationships, highlighting the importance of one element against the other, and providing style, providing meaning to the people, and helping them navigate the entire user interface, more than, say, it looks nice. Because it can look, like, look nice, but it can also be impossible to use. And this is not only something that you see and say, oh, nice, but it's something that you should use for 
doing something particularly, all the other things are more important than just the aesthetical beautifulness of the application. Mm -hmm. So artist skills are, can help if you or we don't have artist skill, it's fine for visual design, it's totally fine because they are not sufficient nor necessarily for a good visual design of an application. Mm? If you have a good visual design application, having also good skill can help, can give some advantages, but they are not necessary to have a good visual design. Um, and just uh, to, to say, real design skill, especially real visual design skill, takes years to master. So it's not something that after three hours we will all be super expert on visual design, but we can have some ideas and we can have some directions and then practice as in most things is the, differ is the one, the things that makes a real difference on the outcomes of applying all these techniques and also uh, the heuristics, the guidelines, the principle that we have already seen help in, in general in these cases and also the, the things that we are going to see today and the next week are for sure guidelines in a way that help as a good start for visual design. So let's start from this and let's have a look at this picture. So what is this picture? Okay, look at this and tell me what was covering. Not word by word, but just which was the topic of the, of the picture. What, what the text, without reading it now in the slides, but just, if you look at it, what is about the text in it? You have to read the whole text. So at first glance, the, there are information, there are the information about visual, uh, various aspects of visual design, but at the first glance, you see a block of text on a black background. And then you can, you should be really, really interested. So if you see it, this, for instance, on a web page, hmm, maybe not with, uh, maybe with inverted colors, you should be very, very interested and read everything because at first glance, what you get from this is probably nothing. Hmm? Even if the content and information is actually maybe good. Hmm? So the, the text say basic visual design involves text, layout, and colors that are the three key elements of visual design and say, okay, let's speak about text. Using white space help separate out a logical chunk of content. Font size and style differences convey hierarchy and alignment is crucial for helping readers scan quickly. Mm -hmm. So this is the content of this, that is reasonable content. So is this better or not? Is exactly the same text as before with some new lines separating content. So a first glance, is better this or this? The second one. So it's not, again, visual design is about how you structure things. This is exactly the same text with exactly the same font and everything, but this is, I'll allow you to say that there are four sentences and probably these four sentences speaks about four different things. And this is just adding white space between one sentence and the other. And the same things happen with just, just with text, but also with graphical elements. So separating opportunity graphical elements convey structure to that. Mm -hmm. Help separate logical concept one from another. So it's a white space, and the next thing is font size and style. So how do you, how can we change this 
to involve changes in font size and style, for instance? What can we do to this text to make it more readable? Choosing key, key, key words, uh, key separate from words, and uh, make it bold. For instance, which are the, the words that we can make it bold and select? Font size, style, okay, and also maybe also in the other. White space and alignment. Not, not entirely, but almost. We focus on the details and we forget about this first sentence. But yes, if we were just speaking about text also, uh, white space, font size, and style, and alignment could have been done the same, but look at this hierarchy. What is this text about? What is it? At the first sight, this is clear that this text is about text, layout, and colors, because they are the biggest and the boldest one that you have in this picture. And again, this is actually the same text as before, but give you hierarchy now. We could say that text, layout, and color have the highest hierarchy, and the things that are within these are related to text, and not to layouts and not to colors, because they are smaller and within, under the big text and the bold text. Hmm? So white space allows to split things, choosing font, size, style, without exaggerating, and um, style and size allow you to give hierarchy to text. And text is actually one of the most fundamental things in visual design, because people, and you probably know, don't read on an application, on the web especially. When we had this, nobody read at the first sight line by line, word by word. You just skim through it to get the information that you want. Here, the designer, the creator of this page, let's say this is a page, is telling you which are the important elements. So that at the first sight, you know that this is speaking about text layout and color, and you can decide if you want to read more under text, and you can imagine that under layouts, under color, there is other text, or you can decide that this is not something you are interested in and move on. But you can immediately recognize some elements, and you can immediately recognize hierarchy between the elements. What about this? That is the next step that you were proposing. You still have concepts separated by the white space for give different logical chunk of information. You still have font size and uh, styles. You still have hierarchy because text, layout, and colors are the three things and all of this is inside text but also you have alignment, you have simplified the text, and you are making more evident which are the three characteristics within text that you don't have here. Here you see text layout and colors, and then you have to read word by word. Here you see text layout and colors, and then white space, font, and alignment. And then you have to read everything else if you want, and also you get rid of all the details. So instead of saying uh, basic visual design involves, it's a basic visual design. You preserve the information you want to transfer and simplify the content. Again, because pe most of the people on the web, don't, on the web, on, um, on visual, graphical interface, doesn't read the text. So if we can convey the information that we want people 
to know and to focus on, if we do something like this, we can be more successful than doing something like this. That is, again, exactly the same content. They are exactly the same information provided. It's just a different way, and not even complicated way to do that. Hmm? So font size, alignment, colors, well, layout and white space are fundamental to convey the information that you want. And as a consequence, they shouldn't, you shouldn't exceed in using that. Hmm? So if all of this is bold, you will not see again anymore the difference between the important word and not important word. Hmm? So here, only the key words are in bold because only the key words are the ones that are important to convey, first of all. Then clearly there are explanations, definitions, etc. Hmm? So the key ingredi ingredients for visual layout are actually the text, as we have seen, are layout and colors that we didn't yet, haven't yet uh, focused on. But clearly, again, the text is, fundam is particularly fundamental for, for these reasons. Then also the others are clearly important. And we already seen the text is actually uh, structured or organized through three um, aspects that are white space, fonts, and alignment that play a role in that. And layout will play another role. Um, and we know, especially for the, the world of the web, that a grid-based layout is the one more used most used and prominent, and we're going also to speak about colors, and in particular, a little bit about palettes of colors to understand which color use when. Hmm? So, but visual design is also about building on the knowledge that people already has by interacting with the computing system, hmm? especially if you're doing something that uses a medium that is popular. Hmm? So let's imagine that we are going to focus on web application. Hmm? So application on the web, website, etc. So one thing that uh, visual design convey is the structure of the page, and the structure of the page should be as recognizable as possible. Hmm? So this is an actual website with just element uh, hidden, words, etc. hidden. If you have to, s to say which kind, without looking at the slides, because the answer is in the next slide, so without looking at, this, at that, which kind of which type of website this is? This is a social media, this is a this is the website of Polytechnico or the website of university. Which kind of website this could be? Yeah, CNN is very, very specific. Um, but news website? Do you agree? Why it's, well, not why it's a CNN, but why it's a news website? Because in website, the news website, you typically have pictures with maybe some title and then text under the pictures. And this is actually CNN. With titles and pictures and description. Now, what about this? Yeah, this could be search engine. So this could be Google, Bing, Yahoo, whatever, because more or less they have the same structure. So if you want to create a news website, you're going to select this structure or you're going to use this structure? The first one, because if you want to be recognized by people as a proper news website, you will follow the structure that is widely used. And then you maybe do some changes if you want. We can add something particular, but as a first sight, the structure should be recognizable as a news venue or as a 
search engine. Mm? And then this is probably Google, yes, by the way. But if you use Bing, you will find the same structure, not by chance, mm? because build on recognizable paging structure help navigating the space. I know how to use this. Even if this is not Google, it's something else. I know that I, this is a search engine, and I know that I, here I can write something, and I can search, and I know that here we have the results. And here could be some results, highlighted the results. And we know it, because we are used to. It's knowledge that we have. It's going back to the, to the, um, no worries, a little bit of music. Um, so we know this is a structure about this, and um, we know how to recognize this. We trust this, and we know how to use it also because of the structure that we, we don't think about it. But immediately, in a way, in an unconscious way, we know how to use it because we are so used to it. We have a mental model, since we were speaking about this a few lectures ago, about design theories. We have the mental model of how these work and what to expect. So we don't have to think how to use it, because we know, and we know, even if we hide all the information on the page, even if we delete all the text, we know how to use it. Same things for the news, and this one. Yes, is what you, you were saying, and as a category is, what is? Yes, what is this? Stack Overflow. Hmm? As the category is question and answer website, not widely popular as category of website, but there are question and answer. And so what are these? Questions. You don't know which text, what is the text of these questions, but again, you can recognize if you probably ever use Stack Overflow more than once, you can recognize the structure. And if it is not Stack Overflow, but it's another similar thing, you will identify the structure. And so Stack Overflow is the, the widest, the, the most popular, so the, there isn't a lot of competitors, but used competitors, but there are others. Hmm? Not as many as um, news applications, website, but there are. What could be? Review page. So there are some reviews here for sure because they, are, they have these mm, stars that are not stars, are circles, but there are stars. And so what, what you expect to be here? Some review because mm, some other content reviewing what? It could be booking. Mm. It's not, but it could be. But yeah, it's about traveling, it's about reviewing places, it's about finding places, and again, just from the structure, this is uh, TripAdvisor, but more or less. Mm -hmm. And you recognize that it's a review, you recognize elements, again, without even reading the content. Okay, you, you got the game. So even if you don't understand these, I mean, I, maybe not all of you, but I'm not understanding these, um, which kind of website is this? Well, let's ignore the, the title for a moment. But which kind of website is this? It's a news website. Because it follows the structure of a typical news website. If you remember CNN, it has a title, whatever it say, it has a picture, in this case a video, it has a description. And probably this is, what is this probably? I don't know, but read more, say more. And either he read uh, Chinese, probably, I, I don't know, maybe not, 
This is, yes, probably it's Japanese. But we recognize patterns. Hmm? We recognize patterns in the website, even if we don't know, if, not only if we hide information, but even if we are in a different language that we maybe don't know. Okay? So the page structure, the layout, is actually fundamental because at first sight, you can recognize which kind of website you are in, and you immediately say, I'm trusting it or not. It's the first feeling that we as human beings have. Because we recognize the structure, we recognize something, and we can say, this looks like a legit news website. Because it's work as all the others. So we build on familiarity, on our knowledge. And this is all visual design, also. Again, independently from the text. Um, and within this, and we will have a lecture about the design patterns um, next week, next, next week, seven days from today, about design patterns, because we will have some repeated pattern on the web or on mobile application, et cetera, that are common in one place or in another. Because these patterns, these conventions, help us recognizing the structure. So not just the entire structure of the page. But when you see a web page, you know, for instance, that this area here is a navigation. Because all navigation that are in that area of the page, or things that are at least in those areas of the page, are typical navigation. Links to other pages, to other things. And then, if you have something like this, you know that the big test is the title, is the name of the site. And if you have some words clickable under the text on the top of the page, you know that this is, you have the title of the website, you have noun, words under the title, ordered from left to right, you can click on it, on them, and they are the navigation, the primary navigation. And again, this is our pattern. So if you think of the web, you can immediately recognize that on the top of the page, there is typically the primary navigation. It's not something that you have to learn when you open a, a, a website. You know it. So if you see it, you can recognize it and use it immediately without saying, oh, where is the navigation? Without looking for the navigation in the page. Hmm? So patterns, convention, help recognize the structure. Also, same convention that say that typical news website has a title, a content, not textual content, and some text. This is a structure that help us find recognize structure, recognize similarity, because also this as a title, a non-textual content, and text. And also this as an image and some text. So there are also these, there are some patterns repeated among the different applications of the same kind and within the same application. And also we are going to see this, but which is the, the most important things that the CNN wanted to highlight here, or which are? Which is the most important thing in the page that you want to light? Hmm? This one, yes, why? Because it's bigger than all the others. Hmm? And are these news, these three are news? Or not? Yes. And they are more or less important than this one here. Because? Because they are bigger. So all of these is not hard mathematics or quantum computing, but, but still are fundamental pieces that we don't think about it. But everybody, or almost everybody, is able to, again, recognize and use it properly. So when we create such application, 
we should rely on these same metaphors for the same reason, to give more familiarity and to help people to better navigate without uh, errors, without doubts, without asking how things work, but just replicating hmm, patterns that exist. And we, we are going to see that actually big and small or structuring things, putting things together, are actually psychological principle that they not only apply to, to the digital world, but also to the physical world, and so it's just using that and replicating that in the applications. Hmm? So let's make an example in the physical world. That light switch, whatever they are, switch is there. So let's imagine that this room is, is well done, which is not. But um, that light, that switch here, in theory, is related to that switch there or not? So they work together or they work separately? So there there is a light switch, here there is a light switch. What they do? Probably the same thing. So it's a replication. But you don't expect that you can do something with this and something totally different with that. You expect that probably they will do the same thing. We are not going to discover it, but let's imagine that is how they work. So they turn on some light because they are separate. And you cannot see here, good for you, but um, how do you know that this is a light switch and not the, the thing for moving the screen up and down? You know it, right? You don't expect to click this and open the, the projector, so you expect to turn on the light. Why? Because it's next to the door? And you know that lights can be close to the door to turn on the lights in the room. And it's a convention, yes. We are used to, like the, the website. Hmm? But this convention is not just something that we learn. It's actually based on also psychological principle that we use. We use instantly, use without thinking about that too much. We know it. Hmm? So when you, again, create something, you can rely on this. Hmm? And hopefully for doing something good, but then there are other, that could be also used for doing something bad because you can rely on this for uh, doing, for tricking people into something because it's the same principle, it's just how you use it that can make a difference. Hmm? So, but we are going to briefly see this in this visual design. And these are actually these principles. I also add a picture about another newspaper, but it's probably not here. So these principles are actually, we are not going to, to see them in very, very details, but there are these principles that are called the Gestalt principles. This is actually from psychology, from 1920. Uh, so one, un yes, 100 years ago. So it's not something really, really recent. Uh, and, and they didn't have a website. They didn't have a smartphone application, right, back then. And it, these are a series of law that say how human typically see object, that say, yes, how typically human see object by grouping similar elements, recognizing patterns, and simplifying complex images. They t these are, let's say, humanity superpower, maybe not Strobelian superpower, but we see object, grouping elements, we see relationship between things, and we recognize patterns if we see them more than once, and we try to simplify things. These are three characteristics of humanity as a whole hmm, under this visual perspective. So we can clearly use that, again, for good or not, uh, to give the information we want to give. Hmm? Like the newspaper that 
put an image bigger than the other because you want the attention to focus on this big image and not to the others. So you are creating hierarchy. You are, tell, you are trying to tell the person this is more important than everything else. You have to look here first, not on the other side. Hmm? And then all the other things that we have seen and, and uh, back up, up to then, it still applies, all the principle about the consistency, errors, etc. but this is how to convey a visual information better, in a better way. So these are some of the Gestalt principles. Um, we're going to see some example for that. Uh, and, and say, and they say, in this structure in this, in this way, like continuation, we follow and flow with lines, or they say element connectedness. We group elements linked by other elements. So if one element is linked to another, we tend to say, okay, these are the same things, or they are strongly correlated because their connection. Uh, if they are in the same region, separate from another region, we say, okay, these are two groups, but it's not, is there anything in the elements that tell us these are two groups? Is how they, are they put in a space, virtual or not, that tell us there should be familiarity, there should be connection between these two groups, hmm? et cetera. So let's see a few examples. This is ground, figure ground. Figure ground say, can we dislike uncertainly? And we look for solid, stable uh, items. And foreground catches the high first. Hmm? So we look from stable items. We look for things we can recognize in the foreground first. So what do you see here? What do you see here in this? A small picture here. You see two things, the Apple logo and the profile of Steve Jobs. Um, which you see first? Now you have already overlooked this. Which you see first? Well, someone probably will say the logo and some other people will say the profile. So here, clearly, the logo is much more evident because it's uh, as a characteristic form than not the profile. Here, what do you say? What do you see? What do you see there? Two people facing each other, that's the, probably the first things you, you say. And then, yes, the structure is should probably more A. Hmm? The what? Ah, <laughs> yes, it could be the, the, the apple that is finished, uh, absolutely, or it could be an, an, yes, it could be that, or it could be an high, or it could be, um, but yes, it's, it's something, but you see two things. And, and we try to see one first than the others. Uh, so again, look at this page. Um, what, let's see, for instance here, which is the first things you say in this base country web page? Or which are the first things that you, say, you see? Look at the basic end page. What are you, look, the what? The logo. That is not the bigger one, because the picture is bigger, actually. But it's more prom prominent. Is colored in, the rest of the page is not really colored. And it's in the middle between two spaces. And it's again, again, color red, it's more in foreground than every other thing. So we look first at the foreground information. Then clearly, if you are interested in Basecamp, you can read. So this is actually an old page. The, the current page of Basecamp is different, but for, for this is what you look for. And here, what is the first thing you, you'd notice in this page? The name, yes, Angelist. And then you can see, oh, there is a logo, and there is um, a subtitle that 
probably has not a good contrast with the background uh, for the world. And also there is a menu here and there is a navigation bar there. So if you are interested, but the first things that the designers of this two web page wanted to highlight was the name and the logo. And how you know, we know that? Because they put it in foreground. So that we, the first things that we notice is just that. And if you have 10 people, well, I ask more than 10 people, which is the first, first thing you notice, they would say the logo and most of them will say the logo and most of them will say the title. Because this is the first things we notice, the things in foreground. And then here, yes, there is the word and there is other things, all nice, but it's not the first things we wanted, the designer wanted to, we to focus on. Similarity. Where is the similarity in these pages? So let's, say, let's start from La Stampa, so newspaper. Where can we recognize similarity? In the La Stampa page. Is there some similarity within the page? Within the page, so an internal similarity. Which items? we can recognize as similar. Mm, so, sorry, again, similarity is, just to pick the... Um, we seek differences and similarity in an image and link similar elements. So, which are the similar elements here? Hmm? The what? Yes, there are some links on the top, but no. Which are, here I see, let's say, three mm, groups, let's say, of similar elements. Let's, four, actually, four. Uh, yes, one is close to the navbar. Let's, let's ignore the navbar for now. Let's focus on the body of the page. Which are the similar elements? The three on the top here, and that is one group. Why they are similar? Because they don't have an image, they have a S in front of it, they are structured in the same way, they are, and there is any other elements like those in the page? No, we just have these three. So which is another, the other elements that are similar? These this two here, because they're blue. And then, the three here, because they are small, in the same position, structured in the same way, on the same size, etc. And, the biggest two. And we don't have to, to study, to think too much, to, to recognize that this is different from these, and these three are similar, and these two are similar, even if they're similar for color, size, uh, having an image or not, et cetera. So here, where is the similarity in GitHub? Hmm? Yes, we need to recognize similarity between this button and this button, because they are both green and they have more or less the same text. Uh, this is, say, sign up, for sure. And also here you see consistency because these three elements that are inputs are very similar to these elements of the inputs, but not identical because this is for search and instead this is for sign up. So they are similar, consistency in a way, but they are different because they are similar one with another, consistent one with another, overall, internally and externally, but also hmm, uh, we recognize that these are the three similar things. Would, would you, to sign up, write something in the first line and in the search? 
if you want to sign up to the website, are you going to write something in the first line, ignore the other two, and, and write something here in the search and then press sign up? No. Why not? It's an input field. Because it's far away, it's slightly different, and these are closer, similar. They seem in the same structure, they seem in the same group. They are closer one another, so we go there. And if we fill the first one, we say, okay, there are other two, and we are going to fill out also the other two. Um, this is also proximity. The fact that these are close one another is also another principle that is about the proximity, for which we can know that these, all these objects are the same importance and divided in a specific way and a repeated pattern, etc. And similarly, common region. Hmm? So let's let, even if they are different, we can recognize common region. And also here, uh, how many regions we can say we have to here in this Facebook screenshot? Hmm? Four? Which are? Th this one, one? This or all this? All this? So ho only hauts or also 11 things? Also that part. Then the link, the, the preview? And then the comment section. And if we replicate this, yes, this is very detailed, but if we replicate this, uh, we can also simplify a little bit to say that we have one common region here that is common to any other post. Maybe they don't have the preview, but they have text, they have something. And then there is the, com the, the region of the comments and like, etc. And they are also colored in a different way. They are separate to identify that there are actually region that then will be replicated in the entire website. And then continuity. Hmm? What we expect, if there is something else on the right in this tree picture, what we expect to have here? Step four, and I've written how. In blue? Or not? How do we expect to see step four? which are the components of step four on the page. A picture, a rounded picture, step four in white with a green background and some text after it. Because we, again, see a pattern and we see that the first step is made in this way, the second step is made in the way, the third step is made in the way, and we expect that the first step will be made in the same way. And what do you expect when you click on this button in the Amazon suggestion? How many elements should appear? Five. Five? Why? Or one, but, but if you click there, I think that they appear five, right? If there are five, clearly, if there are less, not. And why they appear five and not three? That's not to say one. Because there are five here already, so we expect if, if you click here, we get other five elements, and if we click here, we get other five elements before. And if we continue to click here, do we expect to see at a certain point these five elements or not? If I continue to click other file elements, other file elements, at a certain point, I will meet again this, these five exactly, or I will never meet them again? Yes, because it's, it's a sort of circular list in which, okay, I'm the first one, so I have, I don't know, let's say 20, 20 pages, so 
uh, is 20 per five. But let's say that we have 20 items, so we fit the first five, and then the second five, and then the third five, and then the fourth five, and then either this is disabled, but also this should be disabled if we are page one, so since this is not disabled, it's an int that is circular, and then after the, the last five, we get again the first five, so we meet again these, and we again expect this, because we see continuity in how things are laid out. Again, this is a digital example, but also in the physical world, we recognize the same patterns. And that's why, how, it is why many things are made in the way they are made, and not differently, for allowing us to use that more easily. So let's make an example about this. Why they are all identical? Why don't we have these kind of things, one different from the others? We can, we can have 12, 20, I don't know how much they are, totally different. The first one this way, the second one smaller, the third one in another form. Why they are all identical? or also that, or also the seats and the, the desk, why they are in a room identical, and not, it's not blue and the other one is red, and the other one is with, uh, like this, as a chair. They will be probably more expensive, but let's imagine that we are millionaires and we don't care. And also, it's also easier to produce because they actually are um, made in series. They have the same importance, but also, if you enter for the first time in a room, and you see this line of desk red, this one green, this one blue, uh, this one in another format, etc., where do you sit? Hmm? The like you might like, like more, but. You ask questions to yourself, typically. Maybe not all the time, but you ask questions to yourself. Why this is red? Should I say, can I set here this is red, or the red has a special meaning? So if everything is colored, maybe not. But if you enter in a room and you say, you find maybe just one desk different from all the others, you notice the difference immediately, because why there is something this? And should I sit here or not? It is reserved or not? It has something particular or not? You ask questions to yourself. Hmm? So in the digital space, if you have a, in the physical space, if you have a lot of places to sit, you can say, okay, I don't care, and I sit, I sit close to, to this or not. And, but at one moment in which you enter the room, say, why that is different? Even one second, you ask yourself probably that question. This is amplified in the digital world when we don't sit around things, but we click on things. So even this, that is consistency again. So even this inconsistency and continuity of design uh, tell us something. Uh, closure. Closure is our ability to recognize forms from things that are not totally filled in. So, which are these three letters? IBM. And even if it's not full, we still recognize it is an high, it is a B, it is an M. Uh, which is this animal? Okay. Um, even if it doesn't have the border, but just the lines, you recognize it. So, we, we can recognize forms, even if they aren't complete, if there are some symbols, even if they are, is this a circle or not? We recognize this as a circle most of the time, but it's not a circle because it's actually interrupted 
here and there, but for us, it's just a circle with two arrows. And then if you look better, you see, okay, here is not closed, and also here is not closed, so it's not really a circle. But still, we recognize the form. We extrapolate the form. And similar to the foreground, which is the focal point on these two pages? Which is the point, again, that we, the designer wants us to see? among the first things. The red button and the green button. Mm -hmm. It's a way to drive our attention immediately without any cognitive process. Just look at the things and our eyes go on the red button. And then you can write whatever you want, even the most intelligent, smart things here, but you look at the red button first and then you move away from it. And also here, but here the, bottom is, the red button is even more prominent than the other one, because there are other, other green in the page. Hmm. So all of these are, are things that we can leverage on our application to focus attention, to create patterns, to guide people to what we want to convey first. And again, all of this is without text. Uh, a few things about text before ending. Uh, so clearly text is not just bold or not and size or not. It has a lot of other principles and characteristics like the size, uh, the leading, the height, uh, if it's a gender, the sender, the weight, if it's serif or not serif. There are a lot of other properties about text that tell us different things about text. And there are in design system, um, typically scale, so, for instance, this is for the web, in which, say, if you have an header of first level, that should be much bigger than the second one. And we use the same typeface with a font that is not regular, but is light. Mm -hmm. uh, and with this specific size, it is 96 pixel, while the other one is 60. And the case is the sentence case, so with the capital letter and everything else not capital. Instead, the button is the same font, but it's the same typeface, but as font medium, not light, not regular, uh, with a size that is 14, but it's all caps. So it's not the center case, it's all caps. And the spacing also between the letters in the H1 is minor 1.5, that means that letters are closer than normal, than the normal type, typeface will, will say. H2 has 0 0.5, and then it's going up until the overline that is not in the normal spacing, but a little bit more than the normal spacing between single charter. So this is a combination of styles that are proposed. If you use the material design, we mentioned that yesterday. This is for the type scale, the kind of fonts that you are going to use. And how many fonts are they using, actually? How many typefaces are they proposed to use? One. Hmm. So in, a, in any graphical visual design, you typically have a very limited number of typeface used. You can have be one for the titles and one for the body, but it's rare to find more than two or three for an entire application. Because again, also these convey information. Also these help you say why I changed the font size. So one is the title, one is the body, okay? It makes sense. All the titles have the same typeface, so it's, I can recognize when I see a new typeface that this is the title. Hmm? But then I cannot use 11 typeface in a web application or in a mobile application or whatever, because otherwise it would be uh, an utterly mess. Hmm? And what I can do is to play with the, let's say the, the lightness, hmm? so how big the lines are, if it's light, there are small lines. If it's regular, the normal lines, et cetera. You can increase up to reach what is the bold, hmm, let's say. 
and you can choose the size of the font, the case in which you want it, the letter spacing, the spacing between paragraph, etc. All the things that you can do, for instance, in Word or something like this. And get again on text, also text, again, font size, color, and spacing, again, also define a hierarchy for the visibility of attention. Um, and this is an example of the, from the Italian system for design for the public administration. So again, also in this case, why the second one is better than the first one? If we think about text and the visual hierarchy, which is again the first things that you notice here. Yes, and about the content, so yes, for, for those who, who read Italians. The payment piece. So what is the purpose of this page? To confirm the payment. What you see here as big text, the name of the municipality and the name of the person. So here is just a different hierarchy to say this page is important to confirm the payment. Here instead, it seems that it's more important the name of the person and the name of the municipality than the name, the actual goal of that page. And you want that this per person is aware that this is the page to confirm the payment because if they click confirm and pay after this person paid. And so you cannot say I didn't understand. You don't want him to say, I didn't understand. You want him to be sure that is what they're paying with the right credit card, with the right, all the right information that are also reported here, but here they have a different hierarchy. Like the, tot the, the total, for instance, is bold, also here the number. And here the color, conf confirm and pay and uh, cancel the payment are so close, so similar, Instead here, the difference is more stark because one is blue and the other one is gray, almost, almost black. So you see visually that there are differences, that there are different buttons that do, dif do things differently. Here instead, they seem sort of similar to them because their color is similar. Hmm? And also here, which is the information that you want only acting on the text to highlight? In, the, in this one, the price. So this is for if you want to buy a house, which is the first thing that you typically want to look at if you ever would like to buy a house, the, probably the price. That is also written here somewhere, but small. And then the other things that you want to, to highlight is the number of rooms. That's a pretty important thing to know in a house, to decide if you want to go visit the house or you want to ignore the house and move to another, um, to another kind of proposal. Mm -hmm. So the same information were here, again, playing on font size, white space, hierarchy, and, and, lay, and the general layout. It's exactly the same information here, just made in a different way and you can, at a quick scan, recognize the key elements. And also look, you can always look here to see that this is a three bedroom or a house, and the next one, the next card, will have in this position the bedroom. How many bedrooms does this house has? And the next one. So you can always look at this position if you are interested in that element, because it's clear, there's an icon, there's well spaces, and here instead, if the address is longer, you can go one line down, so you cannot, you cannot check. And also here, there's bedroom and bathroom, but they are similar, bedroom, bathroom, also similar names, so easy to, to look one instead of the others. So this is better, again, this is just text. This is just representing the text in a different way. So again, we already seen this at the beginning of today, layout white space, font size. This is the same example as before, just with a more concrete 
uh, outcome that is listing if you want to sell something, you want people to look for something, that is a way to convey information. The same information, but in a better way, deciding which is the information you want people to focus on first, and then providing all the needed information in any case. Okay, we can stop here for today and we will continue on Monday. If you have a question, I'm still here for five minutes, otherwise have a good lunch. <laughs>